taking my mask off because this is the year, 2021, top 10 plus one. I was supposed to say other things, but I forgot them. So good luck everybody else figuring out what to say. Taking my mask and my glasses off because of 2021 list top 10. Very distinguished. Didn't have to take off my glasses. 2021 movies list top 10, maybe one more, right? <laughs> right, that's how we did it. That's the intro. <laughs> Once again, we're back. We're doing our separate but same top 10 lists, all one video. We all chose different movies. We all chose the same movies. But, <laughs> but basically, these are our top 10s. They are scientifically accurate and you cannot argue with any of them, but we will argue with Zach's for sure. There are some questionable choices there. I understand. Uh, JD's is JD's. He somehow fit three movies into one point so you know we'll let him defend himself we'll let him defend himself but i'll go first as you can see on the, the video screen is there 10 movies plus one the nettler if you don't know if this is the first time ever watching our top tens the nettler is like an homage to the previous movie reviewer here at thv 11 bunch of movies that you know about spider-man no way home is on there shang chi's on there Bo Burnham's on there. Uh, one I want to talk about for sure that maybe not a lot of people have watched is Beckett. It's just a bonkers movie. A lot of people didn't like it, but I loved it because of how bonkers it was. It was just a dude who did not belong in this situation, was in this situation, and just kept getting into more bonkers things. And I love those kind of movies, especially when it's like an action, anti-action movie is how I described it. And it's got John David Washington just like looking perplexed and confused the whole movie. Can't hate that. Judas and the Black Messiah is another one I want to talk about because I've seen on a lot of top 10 lists this year, it didn't make it. I think people forgot that it was came out in 2021, but it's just a great movie uh, and the performances are insane. And we have did a review about it before, but it's just a great movie. And it's one of the best of 2021. And I'm mad that people did not put it on their list. Except JD, he put it on his list. A bunch of these movies are actually on Netflix. Power of the Dog. Oh man, we didn't release a review this year, but it is probably, it's on all three of our lists, spoiler alert, but it is probably one of the best acted movies this year. And Jane Campion, she could just make movies forever. I don't care. She can make all the movies she wants. And then obviously you got Dune. But my number one is Green Knight, David Lowry's retelling of Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. Obviously, that's why that's why it's titled that. It is just a beautiful movie. It's atmospheric. It's subtle, but also hits you on the head. Hits you on the neck too. Wink, wink. If you like medieval stories, this is like a new retelling. It's like updated 21st century version of a medieval story because you know, in the 90s, there were a bunch of there was like a Knight's Tale and a bunch of other stuff. Sean Connery was in like all of them for some reason, but they were all bland and boring after a while. And like Kevin Costner's Robin Hood, I'm not gonna start with my Kevin Costner hate, but Kevin Costner's Robin Hood is the most boring movie I've ever seen in my life. How dare you? It's true. It's factually accurate. Scientific. And scientific. And Dev Patel. And yeah. Super, De super odd. Dev Patel is just crushing it. He's gone from Slumdog Millionaire to this. I mean, he is transformative in almost every role that he's in in every movie now let me let me get to my netler really quick really quick sorry really quick just really quick we got to talk about the tomorrow war this movie is trash but it's my kind of trash uh chris pratt as we all know is a weirdo online and the whole internet hates him because of it but you know what i kind of like him as an action dude i know a lot of people don't but He's got the right mix of like comedy and action and heart. I think that's why it works in Guardians of the Galaxy so well, but it doesn't translate for a lot of people outside of that movie. And it's because I think of his online presence is just so weird. But if we can put up with Tom Cruise's weirdness, I'm pretty sure we could put up with Chris Pratt's weirdness. All that to say Tomorrow War is actually good. It's not good, but it's good. <laughs> If that makes sense. That doesn't make sense. Move to the next list. 
As Michael mentioned, I have some splaining to do. My, my 10 is the last duel. I've already made a review about this. This is a fantastic movie that no one saw and Ridley Scott blames our phones, which is stupid, but it's a great movie. It's Rashomon with soul patches and Ben Affleck is actually acting well in this, which is refreshing. Uh, it's, it's just well made all around. It needs more attention. For some reason, they spent all the money on House of Gucci. That movie sucks. This movie's great. Licorice Pizza, uh, written and directed by Paul Thomas Anderson. He also did, he's also the DP on this, which is interesting. This is a coming of age story, and you know, everyone on online is flipping out because it's so great, and because it is. It's wonderful. It's a lot, like, it's, it's honestly his most, what's the word? Digestible? Next to Boogie Nights, this is probably Paul Thomas Anderson's most like mainstream, like everyone can like it. There's not a lot to dislike in this movie. So he casted two just brand new actors. They've never been in a feature movie before. Philip Seymour Hoffman's son and one of the Hyam sisters. And they're they're gonna get nominated for, they're already nominated for a bunch of stuff. They're wonderful. He clearly, like, I know he didn't write them specifically, like write them into the script. It seems like he did. Cause it is it, every, every single scene that they're in, like they got crazy chemistry and they're not, you know, boisterously acting like they're just it, you can tell like they're they have a lot a lot of future ahead of them but it's it's just very grounded west side story i was skeptical going into this because it's a remake of, i know i know i know it's a it's it's a remake and it's 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 you know how different can spielberg make a classic movie and he does there's scenes in this movie that are, it's just like spielberg's been cooking this up for like his entire career like there's some crazy things that he pulls off and everyone needs to see it. It's another movie that's bombing horribly. Pretty much all these movies are bombing except for Dune. Um, it's, it's, it's just, if you love musicals, you're gonna love this movie. If you love Spielberg, you're gonna love this movie. It's just everything about what makes Spielberg great, which is all the emotion and all of the, like, you know, there's plenty of Spielberg shots of them looking up, wow, like that. It's a great movie wonderful it's it's honestly better in every way than the original musical fight me what number one pig go watch pig right now i uh, as i as i was cooking up this list i it, you, pig was like in there but the more i think about it I, I can't stop i can't stop thinking about it it's just this it's it's a tight movie it's only 90 minutes nicholas cage is his best performance since leaving las vegas I hope he gets an Oscar nomination for this. This should get all of the Oscars. It's not gonna. There's a scene in this that I get chills thinking about it. It's it's in the restaurant scene and it it's just everything that they could have done to make this movie dumb, they didn't do. Like it, he could have just been rage cajun all over the place, which I love seeing, but it, no, it's just this quiet just I can't stop like I can't bring the words to my brain right now because it's just wonderful. Go watch it. Pig, oink, oink. My netler is Bo Burnham's Inside, which is on Michael's list. Bo Burnham managed to do what some of us probably said we would do in 2020 as we were sitting, doing nothing other than just, you know, working at home probably or... Anyways, he shot it, lit it, edited it, wrote all the songs, directed it, and performed it all by himself. That blows my mind. It's already been referenced, but yes, I have a whole trilogy of movies on here. The Fear Street tr trilogy. I reviewed these in three weeks. It was a, it's been a blur. Like it was a blur then, it's still a blur now. But I really enjoyed this kind of like event. It was fun. It was like as an homage to like horror franchises and the history of horror movies and while also being this fun kind of uh you know young adult teen like i feel like I, you were reading a book and you were getting new chapters each week so uh it, it's not they're not incredible movies but they're a fun time last night in soho uh you know I, the more i think about this movie i wasn't totally in love with it at the time when we reviewed it thinking about it more like letting it, you know, uh, marinate. I, I do, I think I really did enjoy this movie, even though the ending isn't great. Just the journey there was awesome and a good time. Great soundtrack, great camera work. Just really exciting to see Edgar Wright step out of his wheelhouse 
I'm excited to see what he does next. Power of the Dog, we could sit here and be miserable for you know 45 minutes talking about it, but we won't. So just go check it out, it's on Netflix. Uh, which I've, I've now deemed uh, Cool Ranch Dude Ritos. That's what? Power of the Dog. Cool Ranch Dude Ritos. Because Benedict Cumberbatch is kind of cool. He oh. seemed like he's kind of a cool guy at first. He's not. Then they're on a ranch. Yeah. And there's dudes. Dude Ritos. Oh Shang-Chi and the Ten Rings. This is my number three movie. And the more, like, I just can't stop loving this movie. Like, if you would have told me that this was the Marvel movie that was going to make the list, I would have laughed at you. But I love this movie. I love the performances. I love the action. Love the soundtrack. It, like, it gives me, like, watching it over and I've watched it a few times uh, since it was released and I just I have a good time every time and it's so much fun. Dune, I know there's a lot of pushback about like oh of course it's a great movie it's Denis, like, it's on every every dude's list and whatever but like to me watching this movie I had an experience that that I felt like watching Lord of the Rings again and we talked about it in the review like like watching you know, this epic franchise take off and, and thinking about the possibilities and the future and it's exciting and it looks incredible. Denis like never misses. Uh, the cast is awesome. The soundtrack is incredible. Like I just, I'm excited for, like I don't think there was a movie I was m most anticipating like this and I'm, and I'm not shocked it cracked, you know, number one. I'm just glad it cracked number one too. Like I love this movie. As for my Nettler, uh, we've talked about the Nettler a lot, and I think this may be, you, uh, Zach had a comedy special, and we kind of talk about it could kind of be anything, especially nowadays uh, with the pandemic, and I have just, I've decided to put like, how many hours of content do you think this is? Like, it's gotta be like 20. It's gotta be, a, it's gotta be like 100 hours of content I've decided to just throw as my Nettler. I'm talking about the MCU shows, the Disney Plus, your WandaVisions, your Falcon and Winter Soldiers, your Lokis, your What Ifs, your uh, Hawkeyes. Like, I don't, th I have not seen What If yet. It's on the list, trust me. I just needed, like, I needed a break from, but that's what I loved about it. I felt like you had like something like this event feeling thing over like six weeks, every few months. And it really just, it really kept me going and wanting to, like it, it helped in those times when you're like, we're still in this pandemic. Still, I would love to see, I would love, you know, to really have this experience with millions of people over a Marvel thing, and they gave it to us. Come on, what can you say? It was the year of Marvel, you know? Like, not only did they release four movies, they released five television shows. They've officially taken over. There you go. Thank you so much for watching. We really enjoyed 2021, and we hope you did too, and we can't wait to see you next year. Maybe, who knows what the future holds, you know? It's a good movie, year. Good year, movie. Mm -hmm. Un esercito di prori.